a book called The Callion, was published mysteriously in 1908. The mentioned authorship, The Three Initiates, was three unnamed men who discovered the teachings of the ancient master Hermes Trismegistus, who lived in prehistoric Egypt and was associated with the figure of the god Thoth. The intention of this mysterious and esoteric wisdom book was to simplify all of the ancestral information passed down from previous civilizations into seven understandable and useful mystical principles. This book served as a guide for individuals who wanted to fully understand the universe's basic rules and how they could potentially use to consciously transform the three levels of existence, physical, mental, and spiritual. Throughout history, groups and organizations have closely guarded these teachings, keeping them strictly confidential. Many of these ancient books are unable to fully understood by simply reading them. Because these teachings and their practitioners were persecuted at various eras, they had to be written in a symbolic or coded language. Most alchemical and hermetic writings provide obvious examples of this. Few will actually understand this information, and even fewer will apply them in practice. If knowledge is not used or expressed, it becomes useless, incapable of benefiting whoever holds it. It is critical to not only understand the axioms and aphorisms, but also apply them in everyday life. Each person must internalize, practice, and implement these concepts, as they only become an asset when put into action. There are seven hermetic principles and are all linked together. Mentalism, which serves as the foundation for all subsequent principles, is the first principle. If we start off with the belief that the universe is a mental creation, and that everything is created in the mind of the all, then all creation must start in the mind. Another theory revealed in the Kalyan, the idea of correspondence, states that we can create with our minds in the same way that the all does. The principle of correspondence states that there is always a link between the laws of phenomena on different levels of existence, as above, so below, as below, so above. It shows that there is harmony between the physical, mental, and spiritual worlds. However, there is a structure in which the subtle gives way to the dense, and the spirit organizes and generates matter. This is consistent or better connects with the principle of vibration, one of the seven principles. This principle claims that everything is in motion and nothing remains stable. It explains the differences between the numerous manifestations of matter, force, consciousness, and even spirit from which everything originates. The spirit's vibration is so great that it can almost be believed static. It's like a wheel spinning so fast that it appears unmoving. At the other end of the scale, we discover forms of matter that are extremely hard and have so low vibration that they appear to be resting. As above, so below, from the very essence of the all, whose vibration is enormous, all creation radiates, vibrating at various levels. Matter originates at lower levels or frequencies. All of this confirms the complex and sensitive character of reality. Understanding these axioms reveals that, Whatever we see in our physical existence is the result of a mental or spiritual vibration. To influence and change our surrounding and the physical world we think about, we must alter the nature of our thoughts and minds, as well as our vibrational condition. The principle of polarity, one of the seven hermetic principles, can change your mental vibrations with willpower. Deliberately focusing on the desired state draws attention, which affects the vibration. To eliminate a negative mental state, Apply the principle of polarity and focus your attention toward the opposing pole of the one you want to suppress. This is one of the most effective hermetic formulations. The principle of polarity functions on a vibratory scale with varying degrees, ranging from positive to negative, with the positive being higher than the negative. A mental state and its opposite are merely two poles of the same thing, which can be reversed by mental transformation. If one feels dread, it is pointless to try to repress it. Instead, one should grow courage, and the anxiety will vanish. Consider this example. If you want to stop being ignorant, you can't just erase it like a word on a whiteboard. Ignorance fades as you gain knowledge. It is similar to removing darkness from a room. Simply turn on the light. To get rid of a negative characteristic, concentrate on its positive pole. The vibrations will gradually shift from negative to positive. The mind, like metals and elements, can change degrees, states, poles, and vibrations. Mastering polarity requires mastering the principles of mental transmutation, or we call it alchemy. To improve the environment around us, 
we must first master the technique of mental transformation. However, we must also examine one of the seven principles, the principle of rhythm. This principle is closely associated with the principle of polarity. Where there is action, there will be a reaction. Where there is advancement, there will be retreat. Wherever there is rise, there will be down. This law applies to everything, including suns, worlds, animals, mind, energy, and matter. It manifests itself in the creation and destruction of planets, the rise and fall of nations, life and death, and ultimately, the mental states of people. Even while the universe is constantly seeking balance, we are not compelled to remain in negative states. Understanding the universe rhythm and balance helps clarity and acceptance when the pendulum moves toward negativity. However, as Hermetic Masters, we have the ability to shift everything back to positive. According to one Hermetic principle, higher levels rule lower levels, in the same way as higher laws govern lower ones. Polarization is a technique for minimizing rhythm. Awareness lives on both higher and lower levels, and by mentally climbing to the higher level, the mastermind forces the mental pendulum to move on the lower level, while staying unaffected, on the higher level liberating their awareness from the counter-oscillation. This is accomplished by polarizing oneself in the higher self, which raises the ego above the typical level of consciousness. It's like rising above something and letting it pass below. Those who have achieved a certain level of mastery polarize themselves around the positive pole of their being, rather than the ego pole. And by opposing and denying the action of rhythm, they rise above their level of consciousness. They achieve mastery over lower laws by applying higher ones. Regardless of whether they understand the law, everyone who has reached any level of personal mastery does this. They simply refuse to be taken away by oscillations and maintain a positive polarity while firmly proclaiming their superiority. The master achieves a higher degree of perfection because they fully grasp the law they are mastering, and with the help of a higher law and their will, they achieve a level of balance and steadiness that those who are swept away by emotional oscillations cannot imagine. They recognize that everything on the lower level has a dual nature, and they overcome obstacles by using their minds. They understand that everything is ultimately Maya, the all's mental fabrication in which the being manifests itself in a variety of shapes and consciousnesses. They also understand that they are a creation of the all, not just a portion of it. They are fundamentally divine, a fractal of the all or the source, an everlasting spirit manifested in this material existence to evolve, experience, and remember itself. They understand that, using the concepts of fractality and correspondence, they have the ability to build and mold their own reality with their minds. The notion of the universe's mental or spiritual character underpins the teachings of several masters in ancient cultures, including Hinduism, Buddhism, Hermeticism, and even Jesus of Nazareth. If the universe is mental, it is obvious that mental transmutation must modify and transform the universe's conditions and phenomena, and that the mind must be the most powerful tool we have for influencing these phenomena and transmuting our existence. There are two hermetic principles left to discuss. The principle of cause and effect, which has a Hindu equivalent in the concept of karma and the principle of generation. I have created a specific video exploring this principle in depth, which will supplement this information very well. The link is in the description as well as above promote the newsletter here. It is frequently misunderstood and underrated, but these principles may hold the key to unlocking the actual manifestation of the things we desire or need. Understanding and utilizing these principles may be the critical component that completes the cycle of all mental and physical creations and transmutation. As we end the teachings of these principles, I will see you in the next chapter.